Welcome to your more. You may be on your path to having it all, the house, family, money, and travel, when suddenly something shatters your ideal world. It shifts your perspective. You realize or decide having it all isn't all that. It may leave you feeling unhappy, unsatisfied, or unfulfilled. You're left wanting something more, but you can't quite put it into words. Others just don't get it. They try to pacify you. I get it, I've stood in your shoes. Hello, I'm Gina, the spark behind Exquisitely Aligned. Your more starts now. Today's topic is don't let self-improvement swallow you whole. I like to think about the self-improvement journey as an iceberg. I'll never forget my first trip to Alaska. When the announcer told us that the iceberg we were oogling over was only 10% of the total iceberg, I had an entirely new appreciation for what I was seeing, not to mention the captain who was navigating around all of them. Let's say the portion visible from the ship is only 10 to 12%, the tip floating above the water. Let me share a quick story. Have you ever been on a scavenger hunt? My friend Paul's mother put one together for us back when I was in high school. I don't recall what the prize was. All I know is that I wanted to win. We all wanted to win. It was exciting. We had a bunch of really good laughs along the way. At the end of the night, we arrived with all of our goodies, we were so proud of ourselves, but more importantly for today's purpose, as proud as I was with all the items we collected at the end of the night, I wondered what the heck are we going to do with all this stuff? What was once prized possessions had quickly, very quickly become miscellaneous paraphernalia, a bunch of things that didn't go together. They had absolutely no meaning. They had absolutely no purpose. They had no use. Just like the scavenger hunt, we live in a world that encourages us to collect. This starts at a very young age. Do you remember collecting rocks or seashells as a child? Maybe you still do. When we start school, we're encouraged to collect knowledge. We start collecting degrees, right? High school, college, master's, PhD, MD, JD. You get the picture. When we go around or race around like the scavenger hunt, collecting items like books, podcasts, etc., from many different brilliant people, even though we may be racing to what we are made to believe is the finish line, we usually find we are getting nowhere fast because nothing goes together. One author may negate the podcast you just listened to. Who knows, maybe I'm going against what you just read. You get the picture, right? When we seek out and collect many forms of self-help tips, tricks, and hacks, we end up like me at the end of the night of that scavenger hunt with a bunch of junk, meaningless, purposeless. We end up further away from where we had hoped to go on our journey to improve ourselves. Not to mention all the time and money we invested. The tip of self-improvement iceberg is similar to the scavenger hunt. We're racing around. We're gathering a bunch of miscellaneous items. Let's call it collecting. This is when we are dabbling in self-improvement. Maybe we are testing the waters of self-help, or we might be on a lifelong journey of collecting some of the most amazing self-improvement paraphernalia in the world. Either way, it's collecting. We listen to it, we read it, it brings us great joy, we smile. Maybe we put it on our desk or on our coffee table, and then that's the end of it. We never apply what we've learned. We move on to the next best 
you fill in the blank, book, podcast, video, whatever. That's a problem. Our self-help journey becomes temporary. Our self-help journey becomes shallow. It's like collecting those rocks or seashells when we were kids. After a while, we forget where we put them. Please understand, I'm not putting down collecting. Rather, I want to explain or clarify this stage of the self-help journey. When we go around collecting, we may feel confused. Nothing goes together. We usually are left asking, what now? I'm guessing this is not how you go about self-improvement. So let's move to the mid portion of the self-improvement iceberg. It's just below that waterline. It is the largest section of the iceberg. Let's say it's between 80 to 85% of the total iceberg. This is where the magic begins to happen. I'm guessing this will sound much more familiar. Possibly you're here now, or maybe you've been here before. This is where the magic begins because we go deeper. We venture to a place we cannot see. We read books, listen to podcasts, practice yoga, meditate, maybe even complete a course or two, hire a life coach, or go on retreats. What did I miss? Okay, this is where we are doing. We are connecting to the dots, discovering how what we've learned applies in our life living and breathing what we've learned. We are noticing how we are feeling. We are connecting. Let's call this 80 to 85% of the self-improvement iceberg connecting. Here I encourage my clients to practice in the moment mastery. We are not to get it right the first time. We continue playing, practicing, tweaking, making it our own to the point that we then master what we've learned in a book, in a podcast, on a retreat, or on our mat. Let me add something very important here. When I say in the moment mastery, I'm talking about being playful. No expectations of ourself, no expectations of others, no expectations of the outcome simply being present and playful. Our society places so much pressure on doing things right. Because of that, we may put extra pressure on ourselves. And that pressure is usually even more intense. Have you ever experienced this? Either yourself or watching a loved one? I know I have. Allow me to tell you a story in hopes to shift that perspective of wanting to do everything right. I have a friend back in Charlotte named Dolly. Her grandmother, or maybe it was her great-grandmother, I forget, was a school teacher. She was tired of chalk dust. So she asked her husband, who worked in the petroleum industry, to see if he could make an alternative to chalk. Well, he did. But you couldn't use it on the chalkboard. Was that wrong? No. No, it wasn't wrong. It was perfect. It was something I guarantee you've grown up with. Have you guessed? The Crayola Crayon. My kids know Dolly and this story. I tell them it's the experience of trying. Who knows what you'll discover? In the moment mastery, playing and seeing what comes opening yourself up to discovering without expectations. Could you imagine being the creator of Crayola crayons by accident? This is the magic I'm talking about. So if you're ever feeling stuck, I wanna encourage you to go out and make more mistakes. Okay, a little disclaimer, not while operating heavy machinery or operating in the OR. Back to the iceberg. Let's recap before we take a deeper dive into the last smallest portion of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg, right? 10 to 12% that's visible from the ship, we're calling collecting. Remember, like the scavenger hunt. We end up wondering, what now? The huge midsection, the 80 to 85% that starts just beneath the surface, 
we're calling connecting. This is where we start feeling the magic. You're using what you've learned. You're evolving. You're bettering yourself. And it feels so good. Connecting has a longer lasting effect on you and brings you closer to achieving your goals. Here you may be left wondering, what's next? And that's a great segue into the last six to eight percent of the self-improvement iceberg. The bottom, the even deeper dive, the part of the self-improvement journey that most don't do. This is where I would like to ask you to venture. If you haven't already, this is where even more magic unfolds all day, every day. Think for a moment, what caused you, called you to this moment in time, me and you here and now? Is it because you're wondering what's next? Is it because you want something more out of life, something deeper, maybe more meaningful and even more fulfilling? If you answered yes, then you are searching for a being need. A being need will never be fulfilled with a having need. It just can't. A being need is so much deeper. A being need is more meaningful. A being need is unique to you. Having, like collecting, will never fulfill a being need, want, or even desire, because having means clutter, like the scavenger hunt, when we crave simplicity. Having means upkeep, when we crave freedom. Having has a cost, when what we crave is priceless. The only way we can fulfill a being need is to cut the clutter from our life. Find your freedom in transformation the deepest dive, the one most will pass up. That's why it's time to ditch 90% of self-improvement, the part that is counterproductive and can take you down the wrong path. Instead of collecting, instead of connecting, I'm inviting you to go even deeper to transform. When you transform, you will fulfill your being need. Here, you'll feel at home because you're taking everything into consideration. Your life experiences, your soul level truths, the ones written on your soul, the ones that only you know. Your heartfelt desires, the ones written on your heart, the ones that are not only written on your heart, they cause your heart to beat. Your innate gifts, the gifts and talents that only you possess in that special way. Your gifts and talents that are exactly what the world is missing today. This is where you are purposeful. This is where you are empowered. This is where you are on your life's purpose. You're on fire from the inside with gusto. You're unstoppable. Nothing and no one will even try. When you're living from this place, that's when you're exquisitely aligned. Exquisitely aligned with your higher self, your inner guide. A deep harmony comes over your body, your mind, and your soul. You inspire your rejuvenating body to reveal itself. Your rejuvenating body becomes vibrant and energetic. You ignite your inspiring soul to unveil. Your inspiring soul inspires you and everyone you meet. You incite your in highly intuitive mind to rise. Your highly intuitive mind becomes all knowing. And this is the real magic I want for you. This is the least travel path. This is the least written about, least spoken about. This is not the most comfortable journey. Some may never, some may even fear it. And that's why many people end up giving up. They never transform. They may also believe they're not worthy or the naysayers in their life tell them there's nothing more. So they stop searching or maybe simply they need an advocate but don't realize so they give up. 
But for those women and men like you who crave more, you know there is more.